For this video, I want to take a look at some methods for removing a figure from the background. <clears throat> In this particular situation, we have a green screen shot. This is not always the case. Uh, so there's a couple of different methods that we're able to use this way uh, that we are not able to if we're taking it from, say, a photo background where uh, they were actually positioned. Uh, the green screen actually opens it up. But I'm going to look at a couple of different options here on how you would go about removing the figure. Uh, the first would be actually up here with the lasso tool. And if I push in on my figure, you see I could start, and I'm only going to do a part of this, and this would be relatively tricky to do. Uh, because it's it's kind of time consuming but I would use the lasso tool to basically draw up the edge and then once I get all the way around the figure I would go around and complete the selection and that's one way of selecting them removing from the background this is a very um, meticulous and manual way to do it there actually are better methods uh, one of which and this is something I would likely use if I was uh, pulling them from an actual photo background is the polygonal lasso tool which if you click and hold down on the lasso tool is directly below uh, using the polygonal lasso tool you don't have to draw it out it actually comes out in little lines and you just click from one point to the next uh, I would use this to get a really rough cut out of the figure and then I would go in with a brush afterwards a soft brush and just blend away the edges to soften it up. You have to do a little bit of that anyway regardless of the selection method because unless you set the settings on your selections which we're going to look at some automated processes here in a second it can be very very jagged. It can be very harsh edge and that usually does not blend well. Uh, whenever you're putting together photos, whenever you're compositing them together, you're always thinking of them in terms of blending the photos together. So just a soft edge, not too soft, but a soft edge. So I would, if I was pulling from a photo background, I would do something like this and create a selection all the way around. I'm not really worrying about inside between the arm and the face here yet uh, what I would do instead is make that selection and then I would hit command J or control J on PC to duplicate what's inside that selection then I can remove that background and then I would just go in with the brush and get rid of the extra green so that's one method for doing it and again I would more likely use that on a photo background the green screen actually opens up our options a little bit so let's back up and go up to select in the option menu and there's one here towards the middle it says color range. Now if I pull that open it's going to give me a dialog box and also an eyedropper tool for any time I'm outside of the dialog box. I'm just going to click on the green and you'll see in my little window here in this thumbnail it's showing me it's telling me how much it's going to select. Everything white is what it's going to select. And then I can increase the fuzziness to tell it to pick up everything in that range of green if I push it all the way to 200 it's almost getting it again I can always use the eyedropper to kinda of go around and find a better sample of green honestly I think the best one was probably about there now this is never going to be perfect there's always a chance that I could lose a little bit of the figure make them slightly transparent in a place or two uh, but this green screen was set up relatively well it's not perfect but it's relatively well set up so I don't think we're going to have too much of an issue pulling green out of the figure itself. So I hit OK and you can see the selection that it makes there. And then I could do something just as simple as hit delete to remove the background. Again, that method only works if the figure is against a solid background. Now if I move in really closely and look at the edge, you can see that there's still a little bit of green around the top of the head, basically a slight halo around everything. So I'm still going to have to go in with a brush and do the hard work. The automated processes in Photoshop are great, uh, but they're really no replacement for actually going in and doing the real work. So what I would do at this point is take a soft brush of a small size, something like this. Uh, this is a nine pixel brush for this particular one. And I would go in and just kind of edge the green away little by little. I'm using a Wacom here uh, which makes this a little bit easier. If you're working with a, a normal mouse uh, this can be even more time consuming. A tablet or a Cintiq such as I'm using actually gives you much better results. It makes it 
a little bit like drawing, makes it much more natural, a lot more comfortable. So if I go in and soften those up and remove the edges just a little bit, and by the way, when you're doing this, it's always a good idea to pull out and kind of see how it's coming. So you can see where some of the trouble areas are in particular, such as above the head and above this white glove. Typically anything light colored will give you the worst. Example, so I'll go in there and, and remove some of that. A lot of times it helps as well to use a lower opacity brush, something in the 60-70 range for something like this. That way you're just being really careful not to take away too much of the hand itself or whatever it is that you're actually using. You'll notice that on top of the ones around the edges there's also some some green light bouncing on the top of these binoculars so on and so forth. You'll see little bits of that. You can control that with small selections and using hue and saturation filter which we'll look at in class and maybe in a later video as well. I'm not going to sit here and do the entire process because again it is meticulous but that's essentially what you do. Take a small brush after you've done that selection uh, and basically blend away very softly uh, the edges of that green. Those sharp jagged edges you can see pretty easily by looking how sharp the pixels become and we're just softening that up a little bit making it as good as we can get it so that we can then go back to our arrow and move this to a new photo.